Hello and welcome to another system demo using the Ethereum blockchain. This time we are looking into an attribute based access control system. All the technologies used in this project are listed on screen. But before we move on, why do we use blockchain for this? Blockchain technology provides us with unparalleled security and immutability to let us monitor who is accessing what. Plus, we can make our own tokens that can be redeemed once we access something. Let's start by understanding what ABAC is. As the name suggests, ABAC or Attribute Based Access Control revolves around users that want to access something. Think logging into a library computer. Here, the human is the subject and the computer is the object. These subjects and objects have attributes that characterize what they are. For example, name, ID, birth date. The rules of who can access what are known as policies. These dictate if Mr. Harris can log in to the library computers. Let's look at our players. It consists of the following five entities. The system admin, the EV manufacturers, CS leaders, electric vehicles, and charging stations. The admin is responsible for deploying the smart contracts and is responsible for changing critical information in the contracts. The EV manufacturers and CS leaders are responsible for registering new EVs and CSs to the system and changing the attributes if the need arises. The EVs and CSs are our subjects and objects respectively. There are a total of five smart contracts in the system. The subject attribute contract, object attribute contract, policy management contract, EV token contract, and the access control contract. The subject and object attribute contracts store the attributes of each respectively and have bloom filters to determine if the subject or object exists or not. The policy management contract stores the policies that govern who has access to what and also has functions to search exact or partial matches for policies and a function to determine what actions the subject can perform on the object. The access control contract is the orchestrator and the direct channel of interaction with the user. This tells what the other contracts must do. The EV token contract generates an ERC20 compliant token that is used by the user to start the charging process once it is redeemed. Okay, so let's get into the actual demo portion of our video. So before we begin, let's look at the structure of the policy itself, right? So the policy structure over here has four uh, fields essentially, which is the subject, the object, the action, and the context, right? Uh, the object has all of these attributes, which are essentially the object attributes. The subject has these attributes, which are essentially subject attributes. The action are a set of three booleans, which uh, give us read, write, and execute access. And uh, the context has three uh, fields as well, which is the minimum interval, that is uh, the, min the minimum interval after which uh, a person can request access again, the start and end time of the access, right? So the access request has to be between these two numbers. All right, so now uh, let's actually deploy our system, right? So we open up ABAC like here. We go into Bloom ACC and we open up two terminals, right? And let me just put these over here and put this over here, right? But before we do that, we need to open up a Ganache instance, right? Because we'll be deploying this to Ganache. Now, we can't just do quick start. We have to do uh, create a new workspace. Make sure that the host is localhost, port number 7545. We can change this in the code itself, but for now, uh, network ID should also be at uh, 1327. The more important thing is that we need to have at least 14 accounts 
in this uh, entire system, right? All right, so let's save this workspace and then Ganache will give us 14 accounts to play with, with 100 Ether each. All right, so let me just zoom this in a little bit and we can start deploying our system. So in order to deploy our system, we do Python, Python 3, SRC, and then main.py, like so. Now this will give us uh, a small UI, a text-based UI, uh, that can help us deploy and add uh, different things, right? So let's uh, start by deploying our system first, right? So let's have a total supply of EV tokens as 1,000 for now. So it is deploying all of these. It is setting, uh, it is saving the contracts and setting the CS leaders and the EV manufacturers, right? And it has successfully deployed everything. Now, let's take a look at uh, the actual policies themselves, right? So if we open up policies.txt, we are using a uh, .txt file. Uh, for this dem uh, demonstration purpose, but we can also individually add um, policies, individually add subjects, and individually add uh, charging stations as well, or objects, right? So, uh, the first part would be uh, the subject attributes up till this first colon. The second part would be the uh, object attributes, which are the charging station attributes, uh, followed by another colon followed by the um, actions, which are read, uh, write, and execute, right? So right now, we can we only have read access, followed by the context fields, which are a minimum uh, interval of 600 seconds, which, are, which is 10 minutes, and a start and end time over here, right? So, once we have, once we have deployed our system, we can then actually start our event listener. So we can do Python 3, uh, src, event listener.py. Okay, so once the event listener has started, we can now essentially start adding uh, new subjects, ad objects, and policies, right? So when I press 3, it will start adding uh, five subjects from our uh, subjects.txt file and over here the event listener confirms to us that they have been added right uh, similarly we do objects as well right and objects were added as well and the policies okay now policies uh, were also added all right now let's let's take a look at our policies again right so right here the first policy states that revel has access to 255 open street right and a minimum interval of 600 seconds right so we go here we request access we uh, need the address of revel which will be given to us by the event listener which is at 08 b8 right and we look at this address which is 08b8 over here and we copy this address and we paste it over here right now revel has access to 255 open street which is at bd4e now bd4e is this address over here so we copy this entire address and we paste it over here Since we only have uh, read access, we can only perform read, which is zero. Now, in order to uh, enter a location, this would be uh, later connected to the GPS system of the EV. But for now, we can manually add the location, which is this location over here, charge point uh, 3650 uh, Open Street. And when we do this, it will send the current location and it will also send an access request, right? So now uh, we see that first of all, uh, the subject attributes were changed, right? 
This was because the location was changed and we also were granted access to this object, right? Now, EV, it also says that EV token transferred to this subject from the admin and uh, amount one and the token also has an expiration time, right? And it also, it'll also give you the generation time of uh, uh, the token itself. So we can over here, go to seven and look at all the balances, right? So the balance is given by the first um, number in this tuple, followed by the actual epoch time of uh, expiration on the second uh, variable over here. So we saw that one token from our thousand was transferred to our first account over here, right? Now, let's try to do the same thing. Actually, let's uh, exit out of here, right? Now, we exited out of our system and we run our system again. Now, we do not have to deploy our system again. All we have to do is connect to an already existing system and it will connect directly back. Now, let's request access from uh, the same subject and object again, which was a revel, which was this, right? And we wanted access to uh, BT4E, which was this, and zero, and enter your location would be, um, let me just copy paste this again. Okay, now it says uh, subjects attribute changed again, right over here, subject attributes changed again because we updated our location. But now it says uh, failure, access denied. This was because of two frequent requests, which comes to our uh, too frequent, um, our minimum interval, essentially, from our policies. So we can only uh, ask a request for access again after 10 minutes. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another policy, right? Uh, let's say uh, we have uh, the second policy, which is the Tesla, right? The Tesla has access uh, to 365 airport, right? So um, over here, the Tesla is at DC61, right? So DC61, which is this address, and let's request access from DC61. And uh, DC61 has access to uh, 365 zero airport, which is at EF F6, right? Now EF F6, which is this address and paste that. Now, if you look at the policies again, uh, we have read access, but we do not have uh, write or execute access, right? So let's try to, uh, let's try to write, right? So we can press one and enter your current location, which we will copy from here again, which is just, oh, this is, uh, this is that. We copy this, and we paste this here, and send current location, and access request sent, right? And now if we scroll down, we will see that uh, subject attributes changed for DC61, right? Which was our Tesla, and uh, access denied it'll say uh, permission restricted. So it will actually uh, tell you why your uh, access was denied, right? So if you are doing too frequent request or permission restricted, or uh, if even if there's like no matched policy, it will tell you the same, right? Okay, and we do seven again and look at the balances, no tokens are transferred as well. So this is, this was a little demo of our system. So let's uh, go into the conclusions now. This ABAC system can also be modified for other applications as well, such as car rentals, where the system will modify policies in the backend to allow you to open cars 
via a mobile application, information security, building access, where your ID card will allow you to enter specific rooms depending on the policies on the smart contract, universities, military applications, where personnel can access UAV controllers using the ID badge to name an example, and also in the medical field, where only certain medical professionals can access quarantined areas or equipment, especially in a pandemic scene. This concludes my presentation on the APAC system. Thank you for watching and have a good day.